I think the vast majority of speaker review videos are completely pointless because any attempt to give an example of what they sound like is only ever going to sound as good as the microphone you use to record them with and whatever speakers or headphones the viewer is using when they play your video. And if you simply want to show what they look like, give your opinion of what they sound like, and maybe do some measurements of their frequency response and power handling capability, you might as well just write an article about them. But when it comes to speakers like these, that's where I think it does make sense to make a video about them. Because these were never meant for high fidelity music reproduction. They were meant for two-way radios and public address systems. And therefore, there's a much greater chance that whatever speakers or headphones you're using will be able to give an accurate representation of what these actually sound like. And that's the interesting part, because I have absolutely no idea how good or bad these are actually going to sound. They could sound like the speaker at the McDonald's drive through or they could actually sound pretty decent. And regardless, I think even just the packaging they come in is unique. I mean, look at this weird shape of this box, and this awesome Neutron logo with the big lightning bolt going through it. I'll start with the Neutron Model 6000 external speaker. The new choice in electronics. The only thing I can find about Neutron is their trademark application, which was filed in 1990 and canceled in 1998. So this is from sometime in that range. Specifications and features, it lists the dimensions, 8 ohms, nominal 6 watts, maximum 12 watts, includes mounting bracket hardware, 10 feet of cable with plug attached and it was made in Korea and someone hand wrote on this $14.95 which may have been its original price and it turns out they're still making this speaker new today you can find them sold under various different brand names from around $16 to $20 so this review will apply to those as well so let's open it up take it out and there's the speaker a plastic housing and there's the mounting bracket and that's it well I did get the mounting bracket it was missing the hardware to attach it to the speaker although the box was open when I got it so maybe it fell out or someone took it out but I wasn't really planning on using the bracket anyway so it doesn't really matter but the mounting bracket does tell us that this was obviously meant for mobile use. And with the three and a half millimeter plug on this, it was most likely meant for use with something like a CB radio or a scanner radio, some kind of commercial two-way radio, something like that. Because a lot of those radios had the speaker mounted on the bottom aimed at the floor of the vehicle, which was obviously not ideal. So if this, you can aim it directly at you for much better clarity and intelligibility. I do have a scanner radio. It's a Realistic Pro 2023 with this lovely wood grain finish. The only thing I can really pick up on it at the moment is NOAA weather radio. So that will have to do for our test. Sky is ranged from clear to partly cloudy. It was 69 at LaGuardia Airport, 64 at Kennedy, 70. So now I'll bring in the Neutron external speaker and plug it into the headphone jack. Temperature 73 degrees. Wave height 7 feet. Wave period 8 seconds. Well, doesn't get very loud. That's all the way turned up. I think the built-in speaker is actually louder. Wave height 6 feet. Although, to be fair, this is a headphone jack, not an external speaker jack, so it's probably not meant to be very powerful. But. degrees. Head Bridgeport Harbor. A southwest wind at 4 knots was reported. At least the speaker works. So once I connect it to something that actually has an external speaker jack rather than a headphone jack, that should give us a better idea of what kind of sound quality this is capable of. You might not think it, especially since it's battery powered, but this little portable cassette recorder actually does have enough power to directly drive an external speaker. So let's try out the Neutron speaker with phone power.
telephone. It's the world's most powerful communications tool. And yet, wasted time, miscommunication, emotional stress, and poor manners characterize most phone encounters in business. Think about it. When calling customers, how many times have you gotten caught up in the frustrating game of phone tag? How often have you dealt with tangled bureaucracies that endlessly transferred your calls? And how many times have you left messages and not received a return call? It doesn't have to be this way. Well, it's loud and clear, perfectly fine for voice, but definitely not high fidelity. Removing the screws and opening it up reveals a speaker with a surprisingly large magnet on it. And a squeaky one. <laughs> It's an 8 ohm, 12 watt maximum speaker, just as the box said. And freeing it from the enclosure reveals a speaker that looks just like the kind you'd find in many boom boxes and table radios. So this could actually sound pretty decent if it was only in a better enclosure than instead of this little plastic box. That's the main limiting factor. You're just not going to get good acoustics with this kind of enclosure. You need something bigger and preferably made out of wood instead of plastic. Then this would be able to sound pretty good. And this is actually considered to be a four inch speaker if you measure it edge to edge. Here's a sample using the Sony ECM HST1 camcorder microphone, which is higher quality than the built-in microphone, but I don't normally use it because it makes my voice sound funny. But it will give you a better example of what this speaker actually sounds like. Now let's take a look at this realistic indoor-outdoor speaker whose sound quality will hopefully match its name and be more realistic than that Neutron speaker. It's catalog number 40-1227, which first made its debut in the 1976 Radio Shack catalog, which means it was introduced in the fall of 1975. And it last appeared in the 1995 catalog. It's under their PA and sound reinforcement speakers section. They also had a larger 6.5 inch model, but this is the 4 inch model rated at 5 watts. And their price for it in 1995 was $13.99. As the name Indoor Outdoor suggests, it's moisture resistant. It's in a high impact molded housing, which withstands weather for dependable performance indoors or out. Screw terminal connectors for quick and easy hookup. Keyhole slots for simple installation and mounting, such as on a wall. Moisture resistant for reliable outdoor use on patio, pool area, or backyard. And it was custom manufactured in Malaysia for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation, Fort Worth, Texas. And inside the box, we see the speaker whose shape matches the unique shape of the box. And here is a date code. 3A3 means March of either 1983 or 1993, but I'm leaning towards the latter because not only is it a later revision marked by the letter A, but also was made in Malaysia. So that was not common back in the early 1980s. So I'm guessing this was made in 1993. And once again, it's in a plastic enclosure. Those are those hooks for mounting it on a wall. And impedance, 8 ohms, 5 watts maximum. And those are those screw terminals for attaching it to an amplifier. Through that vent in the back, you can just about see the speaker magnet, which also looks pretty substantial similar in size to that Neutron speaker, because this is also a four inch speaker, so it could have a very similar driver in it. And screw terminals are not so common on speakers anymore, but luckily I do have some speaker wires with spade lugs on them for connecting to it. This one has an RCA plug 
and this one has a 3.5 millimeter plug on it. I have it connected to the same cassette recorder and this time we're going to listen to a little bit of innumeracy. Math was always my worst subject. A million dollars, a billion, a trillion, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as we do something about the problem. Jerry and I aren't going to Europe. What with all the terrorists? Innumeracy, an inability to deal comfortably with the fundamental notions of number and chance, plagues far too many otherwise knowledgeable citizens. But unlike other failings which are hidden, mathematical illiteracy is often flaunted. I can't even balance my checkbook. I'm a people person, not a numbers person. Part of the reason for this perverse pride in mathematical ignorance is that its consequences are not usually as obvious as those of other weaknesses. Well, I don't notice any real weakness in the sound quality of this because it sounds excellent compared to that Neutron speaker. What great music deserves is full, deep bass to give it warmth. to make every detail sparkle. spacious sound to bring our favorite music to life. And take it all in, turn it around, keep trusting in the road you're walking down. So this has been a non-pointless look at and listen to two speakers designed for PA systems, CB radios, two-way radios, cassette recorders, and other assorted audio devices like that. This Neutron speaker is adequate for voice, but not really good for music. But this realistic indoor-outdoor speaker really surprised me of how good it sounds for its size and the fact that it's in a plastic enclosure. It's still not high fidelity, but for something in this small weatherproof enclosure, certainly sounds very good. And I give it my recommendation if you happen to come across one of these in the original box like this. It's worth picking up if you ever have a purpose for a weatherproof indoor-outdoor speaker like this. And here's a sample of the Radio Shack speaker using the higher quality Sony microphone. That's a proof that the bass was so powerful it dislodged my little prop that I was using to hold the speaker up. <laughs>